flying up hills, spitting out rocks and logs. That's the picture most people have of off-road trail riding. That's great fun and competition, but it's only one side of four-wheel and off-road. In this video, we're going to introduce you to another side, the real world of trail riding, an exciting motorsport for everyone. We'll show you everything you need to get started enjoying off-road four-wheeling. Welcome to Introduction to Four-Wheel Trail Riding. People are somewhat intimidated sometimes by uh, some of the vehicles they see on the trail. Of, of basically, a, a stone stock vehicle can, can do it. I think more than anything else is common sense in driving, knowing how your vehicle is, is set underneath, where your low points are, what is vulnerable underneath, and obviously they can't all make every mud hole. When I first I got into four-wheeling, I didn't know a diddly do. I had to beat this thing when I first got it. I didn't have the locker, I didn't have the right tires, you know, and they don't perform there as well. Well, I made the truck pretty before I went for performance, which doesn't help you off-road. But I, this thing wasn't four hours off the showroom floor, I had it on the hills when I bought it brand new in 1980. The best way to find out about trail riding is to talk to the experts, the men and women who trail ride. You know, every weekend, somewhere in America, there's a four-wheel drive club sponsoring an organized trail run. And even more folks just enjoying it on their own. No matter where or how you trail ride, safety comes first. It also makes the trip more fun. After all, who wants to get stuck in the middle of nowhere with no way home? Most four-wheel clubs have inspections before a big trail ride and minimum requirements before anyone can go out on the trail. We uh, go through the suspension and the lug nuts, battery mounts, uh, exhaust system, seat belts, fire extinguisher, make sure that everything is in working order. Safe to take out on our trails. We've got to have places to hook and hook up front and rear. So if they get stuck, which they probably will, when we give a good yank on them, the vehicle doesn't come apart in the mud. First thing we're going to look at is the steering linkage. Would you please move the steering wheel back and forth for me a little bit? Okay. And we check the brake lines just to make sure that everything's there and that the mounts that are holding it uh, to the frame and to the axle are in a proper place and working. We also make sure that all the uh, lug nuts are on the wheels. The suspension and U-bolts all have to be tight and appear to be in the uh, proper order. Well, we're looking for brake lines and suspension parts, basically the same thing we look for in front, we look for in the back. <clears throat> Again, a secure place to hook, brake lines, lug nuts, suspension. You got a hook in the back, guys? Yeah, it's right there. Okay. And then we look in the cab. And just make sure we've got seat belts for everybody. No okay, we've got three seat belts. We've got three people. Yep. Where's the fire extinguisher at? It's over here. The rules require a charged fire extinguisher. Uh, they also require a roll bar or a steel mounted, or I should say a, a permanent steel hardtop. Uh, the roll bar in this truck is not required by our rules for trail riding. See if we can push the pedal to the floor. There. And brakes appear to be good. I can get your signature right here, please. Uh, most of the trails are started by just walking through the area and finding the hills that we want to try to go up. And then they're cut with a chainsaw and a brush cutter. And then they're driven, you know, numerous times to, you know, to determine the trail. Some hills, like this hill that we're on right now, um, we do maintain with a with a uh, tractor of some sort. Every year we push the sand back up to the top of the hill. The uh, a lot of the other hills we uh, we don't do anything with. We just leave them, and the uh, you know the rain and everything just pretty well takes care of packing them down. And 
when we, we go on a trail ride, normally we will go in a group, sometimes two, sometimes 30 or 40, depending on the trail and the location. Well, we start out in the morning, uh, get everything unloaded, fix various problems that we might have broke the time before and didn't fix, and uh, just get lined up and head out, and let one guy take control and lead us wherever he wants to go. You don't need to spend a lot of money or customize your rig in order to get the most out of trail riding. A little common sense and knowing what to look for can go a long way toward getting into four-wheeling and having a great time once you're there. Hear what some old trail riding hands say about off-road rigs and what makes them go. You don't need to have a special engine to go trail riding, uh, just a stock engine. Just make sure that everything is up to snuff. If you're going to put an engine in for a trail rider or something, you might want to have a, a good carburetor for the hills and stuff like that. Some carburetors aren't built for inclines. Like a Holly carburetor, the floats are in the, f the float bowls are in the front and the back, and when you start going up an incline, all the gas runs right out of the float or in the reservoir and runs right down the carb and floods out the carburetor. This carburetor here has the floats and everything kind of off to the side. It's better to have them off to the side. Uh, it's not a very, very pretty sight under here, but it's uh, reliable as a, as a brand new one. I got an ace mechanic that works on it all the time. I've got a performance carburetor on there that works well. I got headers on there that all adds performance and horsepower to, to the rig. That's about all I've done under the hood, other than just keeping her going. Uh, ground clearance isn't a big issue depending, number one, on the terrain and your driving ability. Um, reading the trail is, is very important. In other words, watching ahead, knowing where to steer, what to go around. A lot of cases, putting your tire up over a log or over a rock is, is important rather than trying to straddle it or you know, taking it on a rock or something like that. For a four-wheel drive or trail riding vehicle, your best bet is to get a suspension. You usually want to get a suspension that'll get you up in the air so that your tires don't rub in the fender wells but uh, you don't want it too stiff because then it doesn't follow the terrain. You'll be uh, constantly lifting one tire off the ground. You always want to keep all four tires on the ground as much as possible. Normally when you buy a vehicle from the factory, it would have an open differential in it, which means that one tire could spin free. Say that one tire's in the mud, the other tire has good traction, that normally the tire that was in the mud would spin and you wouldn't be using the traction to be available to the other tire. With the locking differential, both tires will drive. And it's, when you got uh, four-wheel drive with open differentials, you could have one front tire and one rear tire that would spin. With the locking differential, you have all four spin, so you'd have twice the traction. You notice how he climbs here, he gives a little bit of momentum, get up over the bump, and now he's get, trying to get his front tire on that root to get it some grip and climb up that hill. Picture perfect right there. Nice drive. And, Here's the difference in between a locker in the front and the rear and not. It, notice how the one tire si spins and the other doesn't. Uh, that doesn't allow him to gain traction on the side that needs it, the hanging side. You'll notice that the tires get all filled up with that mud and as they get onto the dry ground it makes it much more difficult to gain traction until they actually spin that mud out of there. Greg goes for it and Greg does it again. Wonderful try. A little bit bouncy off the tree, but wonderful. Nice idle up the hill now. Going fast isn't cool. The slower you go, the cooler you are. I travel in the, in the woods with the windshield down. A lot of times we do some, some trail riding, or some, some road riding, pardon me, and we put the windshield up. To hold it down, I just use a, a stretchable bungee cord that keeps it from bouncing. And we just hook, hook it on there. It goes up and down real quick, and then the bungee cord holds it up also when we're on the road. Keeps the bugs out of your face and much more pleasant. A lot of times we drive in dusty and gravelly roads, and it's much more comfortable. You get uh, protection here for the headlights, little stone shields, um, hooks to get us out of the out of the stuck positions. This particular Jeep is made of mostly of fiberglass replacement panels. 
They're nice if one does get the tree very inexpensive and lightweight. We move back here. We've we've got a a roll cage, which is not I don't think a requirement. Again, it depends on on how uh, severe a person, what kind of severe terrain you want to get into. This one is fastened down the bottom to the frame horns here. We pad it here, and it's fastened to the frame on this corner and this corner. Uh, seat belts. Everybody runs seat belts. That's one of the one of the requirements in most clubs is to have the seat belts. We've got a full complement of gauges here, so we monitor what what is going on, especially in the electrical departments and the, the temperature department. They tend to run warm on the trail at the low speeds that we run. Um, I've equipped this one with an automatic transmission only because it's easy to drive. My wife likes to drive; it's just much simpler. And the terrain being rough is hard on clutches, uh, that type of thing. The hills on some terrain can get kind of severe. At moments like these, it's nice to have a little help from your friends. Most trail rides start out quiet and smooth on nice flat ground. It doesn't take long to find some variety in the topography. Of course, there's more than one way to clear a deadfall. For most of us, though, the fun of trail riding is enjoying the outdoors and the comfort of a four-wheel drive truck and overcoming every challenge the trail offers. You can cover a lot more ground with a four-wheeler and carry along everything you need to enjoy the trip. Just as trails come in all sizes and shapes, so do trucks and owners. I'd like you to take a good look at a character Jeep. It's just straight off the showroom floor. You'll notice all the personality in this vehicle. It happens to match the owner, myself. Uh, these vehicles are all custom designed for us. And when you get into those sticky situations, we have what we call a snap strap. We don't use chains. We, our rules do not allow us to use chains or any sort of uh, cable whatsoever, unless it's a dead pull. In a snapping situation, we use this strap. But this is a three inch strap, and it's designed to have a 30,000 pound pull on it, at, and it's 30 feet long. What it does is it's like a big rubber band. You go right out to the end and you stop, and it just snaps itself, pulls itself back together again with that tension. And as you can see, when you get into a very sticky situation such as this, that this body damage has occurred, you need something that's as elastic as this to snap you and pop you right out. Well, what we got back here is a chainsaw for when we're trail riding, so that if we run into something that's down that we can't get over and new storm damage, you can take care of it. Shovel to dig your way out when you can't winch your way out, or you just need to help build something up or repair the damage that we've done when we're cutting into the road. I lift jack. It'll raise 4,000 pounds up to 48 inches higher, or you can reverse it. You can use it to compress things or expand things. If you bend up a frame or a wheel, you gotta take a tire off. You can use it for a lot of different things. This gray bag here is a first aid kit equivalent to what uh, my ambulances carry. Um, it's got just about everything you need, up to major burns, major trauma. Gloves for the winch winch controls, small air compressor for those times you find the trees the hard way, uh, lug wrench, the yellow bag is a rain suit, snap strap, chains. The tires I run uh, are just a what is commonly called a compromised tire because I do drive it on the street. I don't get into some of the agriculture type tires some of the guys are running. 
Um, these are just a 31 and a half inch tall tire. They would fit virtually any stock uh, full-size vehicle around. You'll notice that the bubble down here is probably five pounds air in this tire. And this is what we run off-road. This not only makes the, the print wider, but also makes the print longer. In effect, gives you a larger tire. The, uh, the, the bubble, you'll see how that flattens out. If we run over a rock in the trail, the tire will envelop the rock and give us much more traction. I, I dropped it down to two pounds because I'm running tubes in these Terra tires. And uh, you can really run them down to nothing with the tubes in there because it won't, the tubes won't allow your tire to spin as in a radial. The tire will spin and you'll fall off the bead. In this case, I don't have much to worry about because of the rim. If the tire falls off the rim, I still have the tube supporting the weight. Went down to two pounds and uh, a runner at one pound and sometimes a runner at no air at all depending on uh, how gutsy I get and how serious we're going to be out there and how far away from a pump, uh, air pump we are. The, the large gaps in the tread help clean it. When you get into the mud, the idea then is to, when the mud gets very deep is to spin the tire. That'll throw the mud out and allow you to go through. This tire here is a road tire. Uh, it's got closer lugs, uh, made out of a harder rubber so it lasts longer on the pavement. It's got uh, spacing inside here for uh, snow and dirt to get in and grab onto. Uh, they will fill up in mud, so they're not a real good tire. The mud stays inside there. Uh, this tire here is more of a, a mud tire, a sand tire. It's wide, has a lot of flotation to it. It's still got a lot of hard rubber, so it'll last a long time on the pavement. Uh, it does have a lot of open spaces, a lot more lugs to it, so it'll grip better in the mud, someplace where the mud can get into and it can grab onto, and then it'll fling it out once it goes down the road. Uh, and then you get over to this other tire over here. This tire isn't, isn't made to run on the road. It's got a real soft rubber to it. Uh, it's made to conform to the terrain that you're on. It's got real wide spacing, a lot of lugs, real tall lugs to grab onto whatever dirt, mud, roots, whatever. Climbing hills is not just horsepower. Too much gas can stop you faster than the brakes if you're not careful. Okay, what Diane's gonna try to attempt to do is to accomplish this hill by matching her momentum with the terrain of the, of the ground and the ability of the Jeep. She's done the Jeep for about a year and a half, so she knows how to do it. Now she's gonna enter a hole here, and then she's gonna give it a little more power to get out. Right here, the power coming, and she's got another hole. She'll give it a little more power and then Shoot back off again and uh, climb the hill nice and easy. Of course, no one ever said there's just one way to climb a hill. On the other hand, a little muscle in the engine doesn't hurt, especially when you need it.
first thing to, is all in the driver. I mean, a lot of people can take out any kind of vehicle, and if the driver knows what he's doing, he can perform well. I would recommend just some time behind the steering wheel, even on the pavement. Uh, nice dirt roads, just becoming accustomed and comfortable in the vehicle. Laying off the alcohol, which we do not allow, uh, just experience mainly. Now I'm going to show them how it's supposed to be done. Go for it. There's a couple of low spots right there that the tires are going to fall in just momentarily. There's one, and there's the other one. She's climbing the hill now to keep out of the other rut. She's giving it the best shot she's got here, knowing what a vehicle can do, and not overpowering it. So she's going just about as fast as she dares to go without doing too much on the foot pedal. One of the things I like to do is go down to the Historical Society and find the old maps of areas uh, around 1910 and then trace out where the roads used to go. They've got maps that go back about every 10 years and you can trace the evolution of an area. One of the ways to stay legal trail riding is to find the abandoned township roads. Most of the townships ha won't go through the legal process to abandon a road so you can run them legally. It might take a little work to find them and a little work to get permission to run them, but most of the time they don't care if you run them. You're keeping them up for them, keeping the dead fall out so that they can use them if they ever need to for firefighting. Uh, you can get into a Jeep for probably less than a thousand bucks or and have it real trail ready and ready to go and have a good time with it. If someone wanted to get into uh, four-wheeling and trail riding, mud bogging, whatever it takes, racing, the best way to do it would be get involved with the with the four wheel drive magazine look up in the back there the united four wheel drive association would be your best bet and they can refer you to your state organizations right down to your clubs and into your cities uh, you just find a club find the people look into it as far as what the club does and what your interests are and then go into a meeting and sit down with the folks and find out if they're the kind of people you want to be associated with i guess uh, what i enjoy about the sport i I think it's, it's the outdoors, uh, definite friendships. You develop some just terrific friendships. There's a great deal of challenge involved, challenge of building or modifying a vehicle, uh, the challenge of the trail itself. For some reason, stumps and boulders seem to be four-wheeler magnets. Most trail riders just can't resist the challenge to climb any stump next to the trail. But 
Sometimes stumps are just not enough. Maybe we should try climbing the whole tree. Four-wheeling is also a real family sport. I drive my husband's truck. Oh, yeah. We both drive it. In fact, we fight over it. <laughs> is it my turn yet? <laughs> Who's the better so, driver? Uh, well, he's the better driver, I have to admit. But I do good. <laughs> Kids have just as much fun. They are, Mom, Mom, let's go four-wheeling. Let's go four-wheeling. They're really excited. This is one of my daughters. Uh, in fact, she's, she's sitting there. She'll make sure she has her seat ready. <laughs> She's reserving. Oh, but we all love to go. They're all seat belted in all the time that we're on the trails. They're not allowed out of the trucks unless every stop and an adult brings them over so that they can watch the other trucks go up. So we're very safety yeah. conscious. Yeah. Okay. Oh, how done. Kids love it. I guess it's just like anything else. They like to be with their parents a lot and they enjoy it, you know, to go out with us, the kids. and. Uh, they just enjoy the whole deal, being around adults and watching the trucks, and they get to do a lot of things that most kids don't get to do. We've got back seats in here. We always have kids along. We've got handles for them, and of course, seat belts in the back. This is not a real unusual vehicle. Um, basically, it's an improved upon uh, factory Jeep, is what it amounts to. Of course, a day on the trail, hills and mud is just not enough for some people. So it's time for a little wheel climbing. Like to get involved in four wheeling, just contact one of the clubs in your area. Good luck and happy trails. <laughs>